So one of the newest technologies with centrifugal compressors that is really starting to find its place in the industry and become an overall trend and something that I ended up specializing in really early on into my chili career, that is magnetic bearing compressors. These have moved into the everyday of our chiller world. They kind of, they all started really with Dan Foss's design of the turbo core compressors. And now those are much smaller, but they're extremely effective. And it is now translated into today where all the manufacturers have created their own versions of what turbo core did, but how they did it was made something at a larger scale. So instead of typically trying to compete directly with TurboCore, it's easier just to work with them, use their compressor, but then they use their own in-house compressor on their larger machines. So once we break over four or 500 tons, then you'll see the in-house mag bearing compressors being used. Uh, things like YMC squared or a YZ by York or a WME by Daikin. These are just some examples. Everybody's got their own. How you doing? Hope you're having a good day. I am Holden Schamberger with HVAC Time and Chiller Academy. My main specialties are chiller systems and VRF. So end of the day, part of the great benefit to mag bearing is they're oil free typically, and they have to be to protect the bearings. So the reason chillers have oil in them is to operate our bearing assembly. Most chillers are using a journal bearing style. Now, some of them do have uh, ball bearings or they'll use a combination of the two. Either way, we have to keep those bearings fully lubricated, otherwise they just don't work, especially journal bearings. Like the, the whole definition of part of a journal is we're injecting oil into the bearing assembly, which then creates our bearing seal surface that we rotate inside of. So we may have an, al an aluminum sleeve, but we're creating the rotating surface, the internal race, with oil. Anyway, with mag bearing, we're quite literally levitating the shaft in the air. It's not making contact mechanically with anything. And because of that, oil is no longer needed. At the same time, it is critical that no oil gets in there. So oil to a mag bearing will end up causing major disruptions to the bearing itself. And it can end up shorting them out if enough oil is able to get to the bearing assembly and get on the, the, the bearing coils. Part of how we're doing this is we're using a magnetized shaft and we're putting that inside of a set of very large coils. And those coils are creating magnetic fields to physically push, or in some cases pull, I've seen it both ways, the shaft into a very tight rotation. We're talking very precise control with these bearings to get that shaft exactly where it needs to be, where it can't have any kind of wobble. So part of what it's doing is there's sensors in there to, that are monitoring what the shaft position is. And as that shaft begins to shift and, and adjust, whether we're spinning up or standing still, it will adjust the magnetic field in order to shift the shaft into the correct orientation. And we can really hone it in. So the, the bearing's current draw will be constantly fluctuating depending on which particular part of the coil assembly has to get more current flow to create the, the field that is necessary. So in summary to the concept, mag bearing are literally using a magnetic shaft with a coil assembly to lift the shaft into the air and hold it there and by doing this we're able to remove the need for oil in the system we can also improve our overall efficiency because oil does become an insulator in the evaporator and the condenser we're not able to keep it completely out of any of those which is why we have eductor systems on chillers to draw that oil that gets to our barrels back off of it. By removing the oil, we remove that insulator and that efficiency loss that we have, and we also reduce the overall maintenance required. Mag bearings don't go through oil filters. They don't have the whole oil process that we now have to manage and change the oil every so often and worry about acidity and all these different factors that goes into oiled machines. They've now even taken these mag bearings and started putting them into a lot of air cools. Dan Foss was still the first one to kind of be used to pioneer this, but now we're starting to see the manufacturers themselves have started utilizing some of their mag bearing technology inside of their own air cooled machines. York is a prime example of this. So this is a great entry point to start understanding what a mag bearing is and getting your head around the technology as a whole. 
it's going to be very critical that if you want to stay on top of your role in the chiller market and being a good chiller technician, you're going to need to understand what these mag bearing compressors are, how to use them, what to do with them. And if you'd like some more education like this, go to chilleracademy.com. I have courses on there that will help take you through the whole process on what chillers are and bring you up the proper way with it. With that, MTT, make the time for your family, for your spouse, for your kids. I'll see you around.